Welcome to the third and final installment of my presentation on writing film reviews. This is part three. In this part, we kind of focus on everything else, a lot of the technical aspects of film creation, a lot of the roles of the various crew members. We're talking sets, we're talking light, we're talking sound, we're talking hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Uh, and lastly, but very importantly, we're talking about editing. Let's check it out. So just to recap, when we're writing film reviews, we need to uh, keep in mind what type of written piece this is. A film review responds to a movie. The first thing you need to do in a film review is introduce the basic information. Uh, the name of the film, the year it was released, and what genre it is. Is it a Western, sci-fi, action, thriller, horror, comedy, uh, rom-com, that kind of thing. Then you're going to have three components that I remember with the acronym SAP, SAP, like as in sap of a tree. Uh, the first part, um, and they need to come in this order, I remember with the letter S for summary. You provide a brief overview of the story's main plot points. What happens in the story? All right. Uh, you may want to avoid spoilers. So um, if you have a spoiler free review, then you're not going to give away uh, really key plot twists or maybe the ending or something like that. Um, analysis is the second step. The letter A is for analysis, and this is a breakdown of the film's strengths and weaknesses. In order to do this, we need to understand how films are made. And lastly, the P is for personal response. The third part and the final part that concludes your film review is uh, your personal response, your thoughts, feelings, and your recommendations regarding the film. Uh, even for this part, to form educated and informed opinions, we need to understand how the art is made. And film is art that involves a lot of different artists. We're going to cover a bunch of them in this presentation. For more on how to approach structuring these three components, see my presentation on book reviews. Uh, this particular presentation is focusing on the artistic components of film that you should be thinking about and evaluating when you're summarizing, analyzing, responding. And keep a lookout for the little green boxes. They have good tips on how to write good film reviews. And the first one is write your review for an audience who has never seen the film before. Uh, you can't assume that your audience knows anything. You have to explain everything to them. So the first thing we're going to talk about in this video is sets and props. Uh, this is a really important part in establishing settings of film, the time and place that we're in. Um, a set refers to the place that is being used for filming. Being on set is a term that means being at the filming location. You might also hear the term set piece. Uh, a set piece just refers to a really complex extended scene in a movie, uh, usually a really complicated action sequence. Uh, and the reason you call it that, I believe, is because um, it involves working with an elaborate set. Uh, sometimes films are shot on location, okay? That might be the set of the film. And that means you're using an actual setting outside of the film studio. A location scout is a person who goes out, they know uh, what the scene is, they know what they need to find. Uh, so if they're looking for uh, a field with an abandoned uh, farmyard, you know, they might find something like in the picture and everyone would go to this location and they would shoot on location. That could be the set of the film. Uh, sometimes though, films are just shot in a studio's back lot. Uh, every studio is going to have a bit of space uh, for a film to be shot. And if you can, uh, just build some sets on the back lot and shoot there. You're going to because it's going to be less expensive. Uh, it's not going to look as authentic as being on location though. So there's pros and cons. You can also shoot on a sound stage, which is inside a building with a constructed set. And a set designer decides what the sets will look like. And then construction workers, carpenters, etc., will build the sets for the film. Uh, sometimes scenes are shot using miniature models of a location. Uh, so you can build really, really tiny versions of a set and you can move your camera through that miniature model. And when you put it up on the big screen, uh, if you've got a really excellent model, no one will know the difference, right? The only downside there is you can't have your actors inside the set because it's a small model. Uh, a prop 
is short for property. That's an inanimate object on set, uh, usually one with which the actors interact. So um, a glass of water sitting on a table is a prop and the actor might interact with that by sitting down and grabbing a little drink from the glass of water. All of these things need to be thought of in advance. You don't want to reach the point where you're shooting a scene and you don't have the correct props in place. So the prop master is the person in charge of that department, the prop department, and they're responsible for designing the props, uh, for taking a look at the script, figuring out what props they need, acquiring uh, and managing all the props throughout the whole film shoot. Um, we were talking about cinematography and different types of shots in the last presentation in part two. Um, here are some that really have to do with the sets. An exterior shot shows the outside of a set. So this picture uh, is an exterior shot. It shows the outside of this, this set that's this old, rundown, dilapidated barn. An interior shot goes inside. It shows the inside of a set. So if we would cut to um, uh, a shot inside the loft of this old barn, um, that would be an interior shot. An establishing shot is a specific type of an, of an exterior shot that begins a scene. It shows the scene's setting, right? So um, that means there's really no other purpose to the shot other than informing viewers where we are. Um, and television shows use this a lot, right? We might go to hospital, exterior is the ex establishing shot, and then we remind viewers, oh, now we're at the hospital. And then you would go to some interior shots and you'd have a scene in the hospital. Next scene, establishing shot of someone's home, uh, the outside of their home, and you go, oh, we're at this person's home. And then you go inside the home for the scene. So the only purpose it serves is to show people uh, where we're at. Lighting, very important to a film. Um, so just a reminder, when we're talking about all these roles, sound, lighting, sets, props, uh, all these, these roles are crew. That's the hired professionals who work on the film in practical non-acting roles. The acting roles we call the cast, everyone else working on the film, camera operators, everyone, that's the crew, including the lighting. Lighting is used to ensure that audiences can see a scene. That's its basic purpose, right? Is that things show up on camera and you can tell what's happening. Uh, but we also use it artistically for different effects and emphases. Uh, the gaffer is the head electrician responsible for the lighting plan, and their assistant is called the best boy or the best boy electric. When you are writing your review, pay attention to how the scenes are lit. Uh, are they dimly lit? Are they brilliantly lit? Pay attention to really high contrast between light and dark. Pay attention to spotlights on significant objects. Uh, the things that are lit indicate the things that are important. And think about the effects of different lighting styles. Color. Uh, color can be an important part of film and you can change the color a little bit in the editing process. Color correction is a post-production process that involves adjusting the color of the film footage to ensure that it appears natural and consistent. That's especially important when you're inserting and using visual effects. Okay, so color correction is just about sure, making sure that everything looks right, that it all looks the same, um, that nothing really looks out of place. Color grading is a different post-production process and that involves adjusting the color of the film footage for stylistic purposes. And that's especially important to create thematic symbolism, artistic style, atmosphere, and emotion. So for example, in the picture that we see, we have this really nice cool blue uh, that dominates the city at night. And that might create an effect of uh, calm for people because it's such a subdued, cool color. Some directors choose specific palettes, which are really emphasized colors across their films. So for example, the Wachowskis shoot the Matrix movies, um, emphasizing an artificial green, really interesting stylistic choice because green is usually the color of organic life. And they've got this kind of artificial green that's uh, um, a counter to that. Wes Anderson uh, is a good example of this. If you watch any of Wes Anderson's films, he's got a very distinct palette that he's set out for that film, and it's different from film to film. So if you watch The Grand Budapest Hotel, came out in 2014, that's shot in a lot of pinks and some blues. 
If you watch Moonrise Kingdom, came out in 2012, there's a lot of yellows, greens, and browns across the film. So th that goes for the sets, that goes for the costumes, that goes for the lighting. Um, everything has these consistent colors. So when you're writing a review, think about how the colors of the film create certain effects in terms of the style, in terms of the feeling or atmosphere, in terms of the symbolism. They mean different things, right? Um, so if a scene is in red, that might really visualize um, a character's anger. Effects. Uh, practical effects refers to special effects, or SFX for short, that are physically created on set by special effects artists. So some examples of practical effects can be miniature models. Um, you can have uh, characters that are created with special effects using puppetry um, or animatronics. Uh, puppetry are usually like physically controlled by people. Or animatronics are electrically controlled. Um, pyrotechnics is a practical effect, right, that you use to create uh, things like fire or fireworks, gunshots, explosions, that kind of thing. Uh, vehicle effects, right, to create um, car stunts and crashes uh, and explosions. Uh, weather effects, right, to create, say, rain or snow. Uh, the, these are not um, necessarily actually happening. You're not actually shooting in the rain. Uh, you're creating some rain on set to make it look like it's raining. So that's an effect. Uh, wire work, stringing up cables and running things along wires um, is a practical effect. Um, some Chinese cinema is very good at this. Like uh, if you watch Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is a really good example of a martial arts film. And there's lots of wire work. So um, people go floating on these wires. It really looks like a, a very cool acrobatic aerial fighting style. Um, and you can also do environment manipulation. So if there's an earthquake, you can build a set to have the house shake, um, or you can have special exploding glass for those action shots where people go flying through a window, um, all sorts. And practical effects are nice because if you do them well, they look really real because they are, they're actually happening. So it's a thing that's physically present on set. Of course, more and more we're going to visual effects uh, or VFX for short, which typically refers to computer generated images, CGI. These are effects that are created by visual effects artists. Those are the people who make them and they use computers and they add them, add them in post-production. Uh, green screen is a technique in which a brightly colored screen, usually green or now more and more uh, blue is used as a backdrop. Uh, the idea is that these colors are not something that you see in the natural world very much when you're shooting. They're very artificial, they're very bright or electric, um, and it's just a screen in the background. When you're in post-production, you take that shot with that background screen and you use your computer and you say, replace all, replace all of the bright green or replace all of the, the bright blue with the picture or image that I want. Um, and the computer will swap out everywhere it sees that green or that blue uh, for a different image. Um, that technique is often used by television news networks for weather reports. So uh, the meteorologist will stand in front of a green screen um, and the computer will replace the green screen in the background with a map showing the weather report on it. Um, this shot of a firefighter standing in front of a fire or explosion, this could be created by a, a practical effect, right? Uh, you could create some fire on set using some pyrotechnics, uh, but you could also do this with a green screen, right? You could have a firefighter just standing in front of a green screen, looking at a, a green screen um, and replace it with this image of uh, burning inferno in the background later in post. Of course, one of the benefits of having practical effects is, be is that you give the actors something real to react to. It's much tougher when they're just looking at a green screen or, or they're um, just looking at uh, an eye line where something's going to be added in in post and they have to conjure everything up out of their imagination. They're very skillful, but it's handy to give them something more to work with. A couple more techniques. Stop motion animation is a technique in which um, objects usually made of clay are slightly manipulated in between each frame. Very painstaking. Um, you take a picture, you adjust your clay objects slightly, you take another picture, you adjust them slightly, you take another picture. Uh, remember, films are typically shot at 24 frames per second, so that means 
24 pictures stopping in between each time for adjustments gives you one second of film footage. Uh, very, very uh, lengthy, painstaking process. Motion capture or mocap is the process of capturing or recording an actor's movements digitally uh, and then recreating those movements for a computer generated character. So this is one way of helping the computer out and getting really realistic movements for um, CGI animation or effects. Um, you put people in a bodysuit, you put a bunch of um, reference points, um, usually brightly colored dots or balls all over their body or all over their face. You can do facial mocap as well. Um, and then you have them act out the scene. And then the computer takes those reference points and it translates them into the CGI character that they're supposed to be, um, which might be, say, an alien, right? So you don't have an alien costume. You have the actor uh, do all the acting in a mocap suit, and then you get swapped out with uh, a CGI character later. Uh, very handy, especially if you're creating a character that is difficult to do with just costume, makeup, wardrobe, um, that kind of thing, right? Uh, a very famous example is Gollum from Lord of the Rings, a very uh, tiny, uh, almost frog-like character um, that you really couldn't do super well just with a human actor. So Andy Serkis did that performance in a mocap suit and does the voice and gets credited for the performance, um, but the actual visual is of a, a CGI character. Sound. A sound designer creates and selects sound effects for a movie. Um, Foley artists are the people who work in a sound recording studio to create original sound effects. So if they need a carrot crunching, they're going to crunch a carrot in front of a microphone, record it. Now they've got a sound effect they can use. Uh, boom operators hold the microphones, the boom mics on set um, that collect actors' dialogue and background noise on a set. Um, often, though, actors will go into a sound studio and re-record their lines in post. Um, a sound editor balances all the different sounds that a movie contains, sound effects, music, dialogue. There's a lot of different sounds going on, and a sound editor makes sure that all of these are at appropriate levels, that you can hear all of them, and the ones that should be emphasized are slightly louder, the ones that aren't are slightly quieter. Uh, when you're writing your review, think about whether or not the sound is well balanced. You should be able to hear actors speaking properly. Sound effects and music should support the movie and add to each scene. Pay attention to creative and unusual artistic choices in sound effects. Uh, anytime there's an unusual artistic choice, think about the artist's purpose, um, and whether you like it or not, but why uh, it might be there in the first place. And with all of these aspects, sound, light, effects, you're really thinking about, does this take away from the movie or does it add to the movie? Um, do I notice it? Is it jarring and out of place? Because if you notice it, uh, then it's probably not doing its job properly. If you don't notice it, um, then it's working great. Um, so that's the main piece of analysis that you should be thinking about for basically all of these technical aspects. Music. A score is original music written by a composer for a film. It is performed and recorded in a studio um, by orchestras and choirs, and it's edited in post-production to fit the movie's final cut. Um, when they're writing scores, composers often use a theme for the, the film. That's a repeated musical phrase in a movie, and we really associate these with certain films. So, for example, Jaws has the very famous uh, shark theme, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, right? Uh, Jurassic Park has a very famous theme, da -da -da, da -da, ba -da -da, da -da, right? You hear a little phrase and you go, oh, that's Jurassic Park. Oh, that's Jaws. Uh, sometimes there's a whole bunch of mini themes that we call late motifs or musical motifs. It's a short, repeated musical phrase connected to a particular character, setting, or idea. If you watch Lord of the Rings, um, lots of places um, or characters uh, or themes have their own leitmotif, this little piece that keeps coming back uh, every time that thing is on screen. Um, Star Wars also has some of this going on. A very famous one is um, the Darth Vader or the, the Sith kind of evil motif. Every time you hear that, you know a villain is coming on screen, right? 
very effective music score technique. A soundtrack is a little bit different than a score. That's when you use previously existing songs that are cut to fit with the movie. So uh, some movies rely on this more heavily than others. If the director decides he wants a song by the band Queen in his movie, he adds that into the soundtrack to uh, give it that um, 70s rock vibe that he might want. Review. When you're writing your review, evaluate how the music contributes to the film or detracts from it. Pay attention to bold musical choices, such as silences or unusual noises. Uh, think about connections between songs and film themes. So sometimes silence is more powerful than sound. Uh, so pay attention to when there's no noise, just as much as when there is. Hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Very critical aspects of supporting the film, especially the actor's performances. Uh, a hairstylist or a hairdresser styles actors' hair for their roles, so sometimes they just work with the actor's actual hair. Sometimes they use hair pieces like wigs um, to, to create uh, the proper look. A makeup artist applies makeup to actors so that they look good on camera and uh, so that they look like their role. So you need some makeup just so that um, people show up well with the lighting that you're using. Um, so that's a part of it, but you also need to use makeup to make an actor look a particular way for whatever role they're playing. Prosthetics are really uh, advanced pieces of makeup, advanced sculpting, molding, and casting uh, cosmetic effects that are created by prosthetics artists. So that may be used to drastically alter an actor's appearance for the sake of a particular role. Uh, say they're playing a historical individual with a certain type of nose, you might need a prosthetic to get that nose shape just right. Um, or to create effects such as injury or aging, right? So uh, if you've got wounds, you might want uh, some prosthetics to create uh, the look of a wound on the body or the face. Um, or if you want an actor to look like they're getting older over the course of the film, you might use some prosthetics to make them look older or, or younger, vice versa. You can also use CGI, but uh, makeup is an example of a practical effect that you can use. Wardrobe. That's the department in charge of costumes, which is the clothing for an acting role. Costumers dress actors to look like their roles, look how they're supposed to. When you're writing your review, think about the hair, makeup, how the hair, makeup, and costumes support or detract from the viewing experience. Again, if they're doing their job, you shouldn't even really notice them or think about them, except when you're analyzing the film. Editing. Now we're in the post-production process. So filming has stopped. We have all our footage. We have to figure out how to fit it all together. Editors take all of the camera footage. They select which shots to use. Remember, a shot is the continuous camera footage from one camera in between takes or cuts. Uh, editors use those shots and they put them together to create scenes. A scene is a part of a movie that takes place in one setting, one time and place, kind of like a chapter in a novel. A scene usually contains multiple shots. Editors decide which shots and scenes to keep and which ones to cut or not keep. Uh, sometimes entire scenes will get cut. Sometimes entire acting performances get cut. Uh, and the director really works closely with the editors uh, to figure out what the final vision of the film looks like. And sometimes it's a little bit different than the starting vision. Um, editors have a lot of control over how long the film is. Obviously, they're, they're aiming for a certain length, and that depends whether they're making a short or a feature. A short is a film that is less than an hour long. It is often only a few minutes in length. Um, so five minutes is a pretty typical length for a short. A feature is a film that is an hour or more in length. Typical length for a feature film would be uh, at least 90 minutes um, to two hours, would be very, very common. When you're writing your review, pay attention to the pacing and the length of the entire movie, as well as individual scenes. Think about whether parts feel abrupt and rushed or drawn out and prolonged. Consider whether there are legitimate reasons for these decisions. So, uh, for example, if you're watching an action movie, you would expect everything to feel really quick. And if you're watching a drama, you'd expect things to feel a little slower and drawn out. Let's talk cuts when you're editing. You are working with cuts. 
This is the switch from one shot to another, and usually it's just an immediate change. You're using this shot, now you're using that shot. However, sometimes when you're cutting, you use different types of transitions. So you can use a fade. That's a transition from one shot to another in which one shot is slowly replaced by another. So you can actually see in our picture, there's two pictures here, there's two shots. There's a, a picture, you can see the back of a man's head, uh, and that's slowly fading into a picture of a bird sitting on a branch with a flower. So you can start to see the flower uh, coming through. It's actually not clear because it's just uh, a still, right, which way it's going, um, which one's first and which one's replacing. Um, uh, there are other types of transitions. A blackout is a sudden cut to a completely black screen. Very impactful, very effective, right? Um, so you can use that for all sorts of effects, such as um, someone getting knocked unconscious. A whiteout is a sudden cut to a completely white screen. Very different effect. A wipe is a transition from one shot to another with some kind of movement. So the wipe might slide horizontally or vertically across the screen. It might transition in the shape of an expanding heart or a star. It might swirl in a spiral. Sometimes you see these spiral wipes where one shot spins away uh, and the other one replaces it. The next one comes in. Um, wipes are very famously used a lot in Star Wars. So if you ever watch Star Wars movies or shows, uh, you'll see these kinds of transitions. Uh, when you're writing your review, think about what types of cuts are used uh, and their frequency, how often they occur. Um, pay attention to opening and closing shots of scenes and movies. Analyze the effects of these artistic decisions. All right, that's it for our film review um, presentations. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that you can use these principles when you're analyzing other media besides just film. So television uses cameras. It uses basically all of these techniques. A television series is a production uh, with multiple episodes. It's aired on television, so there's no theatrical release. Uh, one of the big differences is that usually TV series are lower budget than a, a feature film, so they just can't do all the same things in terms of effects. Uh, however, more and more we're getting shows like Game of Thrones that are very high budget and look basically just like a feature film. Basically, all of the techniques, processes, uh, roles, all of that applies to a TV series. You can use these principles to talk about a documentary, which is a movie, uh, but it's a nonfiction film. So it's factual, it's giving you information. So there's a real focus on the content, right? What it's telling you more so than, than the art. It's not um, uh, really as focused on those artistic techniques, but it is still using some of those techniques to tell a story. It's just telling you a story uh, about a certain topic focused on facts rather than make-believe. Uh, theatrical production, a lot of the same principles apply to a theatrical production, which is a live performance on a stage. Uh, that could be a play, which is a dramatic production, or a, a musical, which has musical numbers in it. Uh, some features, though, don't apply. You don't have cinematography, you don't have camera work in a theatrical production. And because you don't get film footage, you don't have this editing process at the end. But you still have uh, lighting, you still have sound, you still have hair, makeup, wardrobe, right? Um, you still have actors, you still have directors, you've got music, sound effects, props, and sets. Most of these things are still present in theater.